Good morning. Welcome back to Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. It's great to be here on American Family Radio. We're here every morning at this time, and I sure appreciate all of you who join the program. And we are going to take your questions. If you've got a question about your finances, uh, maybe your 401k, listen. This is a very volatile time in the market, and in uh, case you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have, it's getting a little bit more difficult every day to be a good steward of what God has given us. And uh, this is one of those, the last couple of weeks uh, certainly is one of those times, and that's what we're here for. I'm here to help you do that. So if you've got questions in reference to any of that, of course, 866-300-9298, 866 300 9298. So we've got jobs claims. Job claims came out this morning, you know, every Thursday morning. Those that filing for first time unemployment claims, uh, they came out this morning. That was up 13,000. So 13,000, still a good number, though. 336,000 people filing for first time unemployment claims, even with the increase of 13,000. It's still a decent number and nothing that we can certainly complain about. When we look at the four-week moving average, the four-week moving average uh, did go down a hair, so that's good. The uh, total unemployed, that's still a three million. I mean, it's not even, I mean, uh, went went down maybe less than a hair, but it's at 2,9999 or something like that. So basically three million, so that hasn't moved a whole lot. Uh, The one month... Just keep in mind that we are sitting at, um, let me just see here, 336,000 this month. Uh, We have been lower. We were down uh, below around 330. And keep in mind, one month before the Great Recession, the four-week moving average had dropped as well to 330,000. That was... The four-week moving average had dropped a month before the recession really kicked in. So I'm not saying that's going to happen this time. Just throwing that out there. Is this the low before the storm? I don't know, but I do know this. You can only go five years or so. Well, now I can say five years or so since we have a little bit of a record looking backwards. You can't go forever And continue to see claims, first-time unemployment claims, be up and around the, you know, 375 mark. I mean, at some point in time, don't you think that labor has cut back all it can cut back just to maintain with current production needs and necessities? Or to maintain some workforce, you know, every corporation, large corporation, has to maintain a certain level of workforce so that if and when production picks up, they're prepared to handle it. They can't let go of all of their skilled workers. So, I, you know, I'm not saying this for certain, but it would appear as though that you got to have some of that, right? Anyway, I think that is the case and has been the case, and you've heard me talk about that Uh, over and over again. The fact of the matter is that we are not seeing any enthusiasm among business owners, business, whether it be large, small, mid-sized businesses wanting to hire. There is far too much uncertainty. As a matter of fact, Steve Forbes uh, yesterday said uh, something very similar to this. Clip 29, Devin. Listen to what Steve Forbes said. Well, it's very basic. If you've never run a business, you wouldn't know this. <clears throat> but if you have to hire people, that's a cost. And what are your costs? You don't know. And if you don't know what your costs are, what they're going to be next year, you don't know what kind of liabilities you're taking on, what are you going to do? You're going to be cautious. You're going to go on the sidelines. And it's perverse in the United States of America, where we prize progress and growth, that we now have a law in place that makes it a crime, almost at least in terms of costs, if you have more than 50 people starting a business and uh, putting people who want to work full-time into part-time jobs. And the real shocker, which Lizzie touched on, is that median income in the United States is down 5% since this so-called recovery has begun. That's never happened before. This is a punk recovery. Mm. It's like a baseball player hitting 250, and you say he should win a batting title. (laughs) 
you know, Steve Forbes is great, as you know. He's a friend of the ministry. He's all he's on the he's been on the program many, many times. But you know, I mean, it's so true what he's saying. And and look, there is still an enormous, an enormous amount of uncertainty. It's incredible. Tomorrow afternoon, I have an opportunity to speak to a group of business owners, corporate America. And I'm going to be speaking primarily on leadership, but nevertheless, I'll have an opportunity to hang out and speak to so many of them and talk about what is what they're thinking and what their mindset is. And I can almost tell you that it's going to be the same thing I've heard all year long as I travel about and I speak to boards, uh, board members of major corporations and leadership conferences, and I hear the same thing over and over again. There's just far too much uncertainty. They usually start a tax uncertainty, uh, economic uncertainty. Uh, It's just far too much for them to be in any kind of hiring mode. You've heard me say before, and I'm starting to hear this now from corporate executives. You've heard me say before, I don't believe in the GDP number. I don't believe in the unemployment number. Uh, as a matter of fact, just for the record, Gallup came out with their new unemployment number. It's up dramatically. It's 8.6%. I believe Gallup's unemployment number is closer to being accurate, even though I don't believe that is 100% accurate because there's only so much data they can get their hands on as well. But it's certainly more accurate than the government published number, and it jumped this month over 1%. That's a huge increase. We are looking at corporations, uh, UPS, a large, large, I mean, a huge employer, tens of thousands of people, saying they are no longer going to be covering spouses in their benefits program and families. They can't. They can't afford it due to Obamacare. They don't feel as though they have any moral obligation because those folks can go ahead and jump into the state exchanges. See, that's what's happening. Also, another report out that corporations by 2006, or I'm sorry, uh, local governments and uh, unions by 2016 are not likely to be covering their uh, retired employees in any way, shape, or form for health benefits. They're not going to do it. It's going to be too expensive, and there's not going to be any need to it. They have no moral obligation to do that, even though they said they were going to do it now that the government's going to do it. You've got uh, people like uh, James Hoffa or Jimmy Hoffa Jr. from the Teamsters are talking about what is uh, going on in the unions. Michelle Bachman was talking about that yesterday. She said this. That's not according to Representative Michelle Bachman. That's according to James Hoffa, who is the head of the Teamsters Union, who's up, so upset because he's saying that this is the end of the 40-hour work week and benefits and that the backbone of the middle class is being broken. When you're getting that out of the head of the Teamsters Union, you know there's a real problem. And again, this isn't just about having something to talk about. These are real people's lives that are being impacted. America isn't growing. We are barely coasting right now and this isn't even a jobless recovery we're going negative the gallup just came out with their poll and they said that unemployment now has gone up a stunning 1.2 points so that we're at about an almost a nine percent unemployment rate just in the last 30 days so we're going backwards at a huge pace and we will continue to go backwards, and I believe that the history books are going to rewrite the economic history of this so-called recession, because it's not a recession at all. You've heard me say that for the last two years, and I will continue to say that. It's not a recession. When it is a, re- a recovery, when it is a recovery, I will say so. I'll let you know. But GDP growth has not been growing at all. I don't believe the GDP number, and even if it were accurate, it's still not growth, because uh, it has not kept up with the 8.8% in uh, population growth that we've had in the last decade alone. So it's not keeping up with that, so therefore it's going backwards. And depending on what, and, I, and I talk, I've talked about this before, but depending on what gauge of inflation you use when you calculate the GDP, it certainly has gone backwards. It's not even close to where it's supposed to be. 
just in case you're wondering why we're still having so many negative numbers. And it is amazing to me that we don't have enough brains on Capitol Hill by the GDP to be able to articulate the real numbers in inflation and GDP and what has really happened happening. You've got the Department of Commerce using one uh, factor for inflation when they figure GDP, and then you've got everybody else in the government using CPI and everybody in the economic world, for that matter, using CPI, another factor. They're two very different animals. And the GDP number, which is called the um, GDP deflator, uh, that number is can change in a whim. They can do whatever they want with that number. It's very subjective. It's not locked in to certain aspects of the economy. At least CPI attempts to do that. So we continue to see these issues in the economy. And we're wondering why people are stressing. Let me tell you, I wrote, if you are a partner with me on the website, I, I sent out an alert last night. Take heed. If you haven't opened it, make sure you open it and read it, and you better take heed. But let me tell you something, folks. Every single number that I continue to look at, and I've done that an awful lot in the last couple of days, <clears throat> it is not looking good. And I'm beginning to believe that the real, that the real GDP. So here's my, here's my uh, premise by which I am starting, my starting point, the yardstick by which I'm trying to find a way to measure why certain things are happening in this so-called recovery. And when you look at it, and you've heard me say this, there there is no correlation between what is really happening in the economy and what the numbers are. There's no correlation whatsoever. So something somewhere is being made up. Something somewhere, there is an illusion being created. The GDP number is an illusion, It's not an actual number, in my opinion. It's an illusion because you can't even get the the inflation factor in GDP right. And I don't believe they're doing an accurate job in factoring in uh, population growth. It's an illusion. And the reason I say it's an illusion because you've got to look at the numbers that go alongside any growing economy. They're not there. The numbers that should be happening aren't happening. We should see a decrease in poverty. We should be a, in, see an increase in the median wage. We should see a decrease in people using food stamps and disability benefits. We should see uh, uh, spending in the, con, in, in the economy and more discretionary income. We're seeing just the opposite. We're seeing a, for the first time in in any recovery, a lowering, a demand, a lower demand on energy, which means people are turning the thermostats down. People are trying to reduce their cost any way they can. I could go on and on and on about the indicators where there's no correlation. And as I was beginning to say, in reference to the alert that I sent out to the partners last night, the fact of the matter is, folks, we, not could, we will see. I don't know if the last two weeks of the markets continuing to go down is an indication or the beginning of the downward spiral that we are yet to see that's going to be a sustainable spiral that is going to stay low for an extended period of time and maybe even throw us back into a technical recession. But it sure looks like it's going to be, and if it's not this time, it's going to be the next time or the time after that. But it is unavoidable, and you better be thinking long and hard about what you're doing in your 401Ks, your IRAs, your investment strategies, your savings, and other things. Financial Issues, I'm Dan Celia, 866-300-9298. I know many of you have questions on your finance. Uh, Call us. We're going to get to the phones right after this. 866-300-9298. We'll be right back. Some say the only guarantees in life are death and taxes. But another sure thing to consider is relationships. Everyone has them. Unfortunately, experience tells us few have great relationships. We are launching great relationships right here on American Family Radio. This is biblically-based material to help you understand and have great relationships. Great Relationships, Sundays at 1030 Central, 1130 Eastern. Right thinking, right relationships, right now. 
Hi, this is Dan Celia at Financial Issues. Would you consider partnering with me? You know, for $85 a year, you're going to get some great information on stock picks, alert system that will alert you to buys and sells. What a great way to look at a portfolio from a biblical perspective for a small amount of money each month. Not only that, it goes to support the ministry here at Financial Issues, financialissues.org. A man traveled a great distance to meet and interview a distinguished scholar. This scholar had written many books, had a library of thousands of volumes, had traveled extensively, and conversed with some of the world's wisest people. So the first question the interviewer asked was, from all your knowledge, what is the one thing most worth knowing? The scholar smiled and gently answered, there are only two things most worth knowing. One is that I am a great sinner, and the other is that Jesus Christ is a great Savior. That scholar not only possessed knowledge, but he possessed great wisdom as well. This is David Jeremiah, encouraging you to get on the road to new life. Discover the true knowledge of God on Route 66. Route 66, driving the word home. Log on to Route66life.com. Start your journey home today. Hi, this is Dan Celia. I get phone calls every day, Dan, what should I do? What are we going to do as America, as an economy, in the stock markets? What should I buy? What shouldn't I buy? I hear it every single day on every program. You hear it too if you're listening. Look, every single one of them are valid concerns. And I can give a little bit of insight and some ideas of where we might be going, but you and I know, only the Lord knows for sure, but I do know this. 